Hello and welcome, this is Rufalmonger, and today we are talking about Fantasy Strike, a newly free-to-play fighting game. So this game has existed in the past, but it is very new to being free-to-play, so that's why we are covering today, because for the cost of free, I think this is a worthwhile experience for you to check out. So hey, it's a fighting game, obviously enough, right? And it's uh, very much a back to basics fighting game. Now you could say certain things are like dumbed down, if you want to use that term, or limited, but everything is done by design to kind of just capture the pure essence of what a fighting game is without any of the fluff. And in that, I do think they have pretty much succeeded. So let's have a look at the game and let's talk about it. So you're looking at some gameplay right now and you probably the first thing you notice before anything else is the life bars. They're segmented, they're different, they're all up in chunks and it's uh, much more hit points than the traditional life bar in a fighting game. So each bar of life is one life. Uh, pretty easy, right? Uh, if you take a hit, that's it, it's gone. From the most humble jab to the longest range poke, it doesn't matter, one hit, one damage with a couple exceptions. Uh, and that is where the core of the game is. Uh, so each character has their own life values. You know, uh, Rook, the big stone guy, has the most, as far as I can tell. And someone like Jaina has less because she's more of a hardcore zoner. And you just work from there, and that's kind of the inherent balance right then and there, right? Uh, so if you do a two-hit combo, then it's two damage. Do three-hit combo, then it's three damage. So it's uh, very easy to understand how the health works. Also, if you block too much, you will lose a chunk of health, so it's effectively chip damage as well. So it's a three-button game, uh, light, medium, heavy, if you will. Uh, although in the menus it's attack, special one, special two. Uh, and there's also throws and supers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a dedicated jump button. Up is not jump by default, although you can change it that way, and I did right away, just so you know, and I think you should too. So here we are in training mode now. I spent uh, most of my time with Rook, so it's the character I understand the most. And here's the basic attack. So uh, in any other game, this would be like, oh, you'd say this is like crouch light or something, right? Except there's no crouching in this game at all. You just walk forward, walk back, and jumps. So that's all you got. So each stand light is basically tailor purpose for each character, right? And there's also command normals as well. So we also have forward light, which is this big old footsie's boot here, you know, to make up for the range of this guy, right? Just meant to be a fast button for a slow character. And if you are close, this guy is also a two hitter. Two damage is a lot in this game. And uh, this game very much pulls from other games of fighting game past. Rook being the prototypical grappler character of the game, pulling from one of the most famous grapplers of all time, Iron Tiger, and yo, at the master of magnetism here. So this is a backlight or back attack or whatever you want to call it. And it'll suck people and also it destroys projectiles on hit very much like a Hugo clap, right? And it also combos into his grab, which is pretty handy. For his special one or medium, he has an armored uh, rushing attack. And uh, once again, since health uh, very easy to tell by the chunks. Uh, so he's very easy, just like, okay, I'm going to trade, right? And the heavy special two is a command grab, and it's an armored command grab. And does two damage instead of the usual one most attacks do. Uh, and then it kind of leads in the whole thing. Everyone has a regular throw. His regular throw does two damage as well. And it's another spinning pile driver, by the way. And yeah, so it has a little bit of mixed potential, which we'll talk about in a second with the Yomi counter. And of course, everyone has aerial moves as well. Uh, is very much inspired by Zangief, I'm sure you can tell. Uh, jump medium is air, or rather projectile invincible. So it's a kind of a way to get around stuff. Jump heavy is a ground pound. Hits full screen. Although it doesn't do any damage unless you land on top of them. But the idea is basically, okay, I knock you down, I can do my charge gain some space and just work forward from there, right? So it's a way for a grappler to kind of gain some space from full screen. Now let's go back to that grappler. So you might notice here, it says jumpable for the big boy grab, right? And it's like, so hey, don't be in the way of this. Because um, you can't even really walk out of it because the range is the real deal. As you can see there, so walking out of it's not going to really save you too much. Uh, but yeah, you can jump out. But here's the thing, in this game, throws. Basic throws. You can actually grab people in the beginning of their jump. So in Brooke's case, it's kind of like a 50-50, right? But here's where we can have a built-in game mechanic to totally next level somebody. 
Now, this is what we call the Yomi counter. So if you know the opponent's going to go for a basic throw, there's no teching in this game, right? But if you know they're going to go for a basic throw, what you do is just stand perfectly still. And if you stand perfectly still when they go for a basic throw, what's this? Oh, man, look at me. I just got blasted. So what was that? That was the Yomi counter. So by standing perfectly still in the vein of like Virtual Fighter, right? Uh, characters like Jackie, Brian, Vanessa Lewis have counters where you just stand perfectly still. You blast a dude. Now, on top of it doing damage, it also completely fills your super bar. So this is basically like, I'm so in your head. I know you're going to go for that throw and now get owned and I got a free super while also hurting you. So yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Also, speaking of supers, uh, Farouk, ground a super like Omega level spinning pile driver, three damage. Might be the highest damaging move in the game, not sure. And keeping with the Zangief motive, the air super, because everyone has a ground air super. Oh man, you're dizzy because of the headbutt, right? You know, Zangief, ha <laughs> uh, So yeah, uh, wearing the influences on the sleeve to say the least. But that's a lot of the basic mechanics, right? So everyone has a light, a medium, and a heavy. Uh, the heavies are usually very unique character to character. Everyone has two supers, one on the ground and one in the air, and you just kind of go from there. And everyone fulfills their archetype now on archetypes. We'll go over that in a moment. But let's talk about the free-to-play aspects of the game and also the online, which is top-notch. So the online play is GGPO, Rollback Netcode, aka the netcode everyone wants for every fighter, and very few fighters actually have. So being a rollback game and good rollback, I can tell you from my experiences online, everything was fantastic. Can't complain one lick. Uh, pretty much every game I had, very playable, didn't notice a thing, right? And that's exactly what you want. You want to be able to not notice, and that's what rollback lets you have. So online experience is stellar. Now also... This game is cross-play on everything. You can get it on everything, pretty much. Uh, I got on, I'm playing on PS4 myself, PC, uh, all the sorts of stuff, right? And yeah, so if I have PS4 and you're on PC, not a problem. We can play together. And let's talk about that free-to-play aspect. So I am on the free-to-play version, on this free-to-play version. Hey, you can play online just fine. That's not really gay. Casual play and rank, that's all good. Uh, I won a ranked tournament. That's all cool, I guess, right? <laughs> um, of course, you know, being free to play, you know, you got your microtransactions. Uh, but you are not gated in any character. You get every character in the game right off the bat. You do not have to worry about that. So that is very cool. And uh, on that note here, so yeah, you can microtransaction. Yo, there's gems. Uh, they don't say which one's best value. Uh, but the big thing here is we got what we call the core pack. So the core pack, if you get it, gives you a bunch of the single player stuff, arcade survival mode. The only thing that's really missing from the free to play version that you'd want is you can't directly challenge a friend unless one of the two of you has the core pack. As long as one of you do, then it's all good. Uh, but other than that, like you got to gate something. There's got to be a reason to spend money. That's kind of how free to play works, right? But you can play online and casual and ranked and no problem. You get every character in the game. You get full training mode. Uh, training mode has frame data and all that fun stuff too, right? So you get a lot for the free to play package. And yeah, so if you want to spend money, though, you are so inclined, you can. Uh, there's a subscription service, that kind of stuff. Uh, this stuff rotates is my understanding. But yeah, so you get a lot for the zero you're putting in. I'm a pretty big fan of that. Now, on to the characters themselves. There's 12 right now, as you can see, and they're all kind of gated into their own little archetype areas. So we got Zoner, uh, we got Rushdown Grappler, and Wildcard, which is kind of their own weird little thing. Uh, and everyone definitely has some inspiration from certain fighting game characters over the years. Like a grave he's very much the ryu of the game and actually just just show him off for a split second here grave has your classic uh shoto fireball if you want to look at the super yo shin you can just like goken in street fighter 4 but you know just because he has it doesn't mean he has some non shoto stuff right like he has Haumaru's, uh giant slash from uh sam show and it's full invincible startup also, he's like Rachel in uh, Blaze Blue because you can control the wind. And while you're controlling the wind, your projectiles get different, which is a whole crazy thing, right? So even though there's inspirations from one character, doesn't mean uh, they are a slave to that character because a lot of characters have a lot of inspirations from a lot of other characters. So from this list here, uh, Geiger is basically 
<laughs> Guile from Street Fighter mixed with Rugal from King of Fighters. Uh, Jane, I can't really put a more classic example to her. I guess you could say Matera from Grand Blue, but she definitely predates Matera. Uh, but classic Archer Zoner, multiple angles, all that fun stuff. Argagarg is a Murloc, and this Murloc is Dalsum. Uh, actually, let's look at him too for a second. Okay, just in case you doubt how Dalsum he is. Yo, look at these normals. He can control the sky, he's got yoga drill. He can just meditate, you know, have fun like Dalsum can. He's very much Dalsum. Also, he's Fang. And his poison's a lot better than Fang's ever is, because uh, the poison only goes away if he gets hit. And it can take two uh, stocks of health from you, which is a pretty big deal. And it can kill, unlike Fang's, right? Um, if you like Mei from uh, Guilty Gear, yo! Got a big old fish of his own. Very happy to use it. Can use it in conjunction with normals and just all sorts of pressure. Uh, if you call him, you can easily set up uh, poison. He can control water, which pushes the enemy back. And while he's controlling the water, he can send fish out to attack in multiple different angles. He's just a nut. This guy uh, is crazy. I can't really say much more than that. Setsuki is literally a buki. I mean, literally a buki. Valerie is a horrible hellscape monster mix of like Milia from Guilty Gear and Zero from Marvel vs. Capcom, and I don't like her. Rook, on the other hand, is Honorable Grappler Man, and he is good, whereas Valerie is very bad. And Midori? Well, hey, let's look at Midori. So Midori is kind of like Honda. It's got these dive kicks here, which are very much like Sumo Headbutt. It's got 100 Hand Slap. Uh, he has like the Butt Slam, all that kind of stuff, right? But where he's very unique is he has an install. And what kind of install does he have? Well, it's a dragon install. Ready and while you're the dragon, yo, everything's just crazy and better. And you just kind of crap on everybody. And he's just a monster. And yeah, so it doesn't last forever. But man, you're just a tyrant while you're the dragon. And so yeah, he's he Honda with a dragon install. For the wild card characters, they all kind of do their own weird thing. It's hard to classify. Lum is like Blanca mixed with Chun Li mixed with Foss from Guilty Gear, and that he throws a lot of random items. Uh, De Grey is Slayer and has Dandy Step and Pile Bunker and all that stuff. Also has Bionic Arm, and also can send out the Ghost as a shield that breaks projectiles and does a capture state like he's Sub Zero. So yeah, he's got a bunch of weird stuff. And Quince, man, I. Okay, we'll just go into it for a second. Okay, so Quince has like illusions and stuff, right? And he's gonna see here, like, cool that hit. And that was a cross up, except for when it doesn't, because you choose which side you're gonna be on all the time, and only gets worse when you put a lot of other stuff in it. Because then, like, yo, who am I? What's going on? Like, which one's the real me? Like, all this kind of stuff. And on top of all that, he has like, uh, Aegis Reflector. And if Aegis Reflector hits, and all of a sudden we're in a new weird state where all the illusions are real. Even if I choose not to take the place of the illusion, all of them are real and they all happen at the same time. And basically I'm just gonna assume you're never gonna block a good quince because he's a nutter. And Oni Maru is basically like footsie's guy, big boy footsie's guy. Has a lot of good range, does more damage than most characters off single hits. Has a little bit of armor and has ridiculous pressure with his robot super. And yeah, that is Fantasy Strike in a nutshell. Uh, so would I recommend it? Hey, absolutely, because you can't beat the price, right? And once again, it's on everything, so you can download it, crossplay with everyone. GGPO rollback netcode, so the online experience is very good. Uh, I do like with ranked. Ranked's actually like King of Fighters. You actually have to pick three characters. Casual and friend matches, you can pick one, whatever. But yeah, so that's really cool too. I think that's pretty neat. Uh, but in my time with it, fun game. Uh, every character is very unique, which is what you want in a fighting game. You want unique characters. And in that, I think it definitely succeeds. Uh, as far as uh, the back to basics nature of the game, also I think that's uh, very successful. As someone who grew up in the Street Fighter 2 days, uh, I see a lot of like what I remember and love about Street Fighter 2 in this game as far as the basics go. So I think thumbs up on that one. So go out, give it a shot. Literally won't cost you a dime, so why not? But anyways, my friends, that's the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Fantasy Strike.